Welcome to About the Wine Libs. In this show, we will be chatting to leaders, influencers, wine producers, restaurants, and other role players. Tune in every week for our latest episode. You will find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to About the Wine Lens. Today, I'm talking to Matthew Day. Uh, Matthew is the head winemaker at Plain Constantia. Welcome, Matthew, to About the Wine Lens. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for having me. It's a great honor to be on this. No, it's a pleasure. I mean, you're the one spending your time to come and talk to us, and um, I'm sure our listeners um, will appreciate that. Matthew, um, how did you start in the wine business? Yeah... It's a tough question because I'm actually a, a Bali. I'm from Johannesburg. Um, oh my word. Yeah, I know. It's, but it's weird. A lot of winemakers that you meet, meet these days actually aren't from the winelands. Um, it's probably because all the people who grew up on wine farms realize how hard the work actually is and they don't want to become winemakers. So it's <laughs> us to be Bali's and all the rest that come down and, and do, do the job that no one wants to do, you know? Um, now, I, I grew up on a farm in the south of Jansburg, and I absolutely loved farming, um, and I had this great passion for wine, so I decided to go study at the University of Stellenbosch, um, yeah, which was a great stepping stone getting me into this career at, at Planck and Stature, which has been incredible. Amazing. So did you um, move from Varsity straight to Planck and Stature, or how did you, how did you progress? Um, because uh, my, my story is quite short in that I've worked at Clank Essential my whole entire professional career. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of started, started as a paper sleeper, a sailor rat or a sailor hand and, and worked my way up. Um, but yeah, I've, I graduated at Stellenbosch. Um, and in that time, I, as part of my prac, I did a harvest at, at Mealist. Okay. Um, and uh, I made a barrel of wine at Mealist. I bought some grapes, bought the barrel and all the rest and um, kind of bottled, bottled this wine a week before my interview at Clank and Stature. Um, and in the time you know, I worked in Australia um, and then I worked at the wine cellar in, in Cape Town and then I worked in France in Saint Emilion. And then mm -hmm. I just bought this wine and I walked into a job interview for a harvest assistant position and I just bottled the, the wine and I, I had a bottle of the Shiraz that I made and I put it onto Adam Mason's desk and I said, well, try the wine if you like it. You can give me the job at Clank and Stature. If you don't like it, we can carry on with the interview. Um, and that's how I started out as my first job at Clank and Stancher. Wow. So I was, you know, I, I started off as a paper sleeper, then eventually after some time became assistant winemaker um, where I was still a paper sleeper um, and uh, or a seller, seller hand and did all the hard work of scrubbing the floors and the tanks and all the rest. And eventually, um, Clank and Stancher was sold at the end of 2011. And I was very fortunate with, with the change. Adam Mason um, decided to move to Stellenbosch. He, he took the job at Mulderbosch. Mm -hmm. And the new owners that had just bought Clank and Stancher said, well, Matt, you've, you've been here a couple of years. Um, we trust you. We want to give you all the opportunities that you can possibly have and uh, we'll give you a chance and let's make a break, literally prove yourself and you can be become head winemaker at Clank and or find another job basically. So I'm still here today um, and loving what I do. So this has now been my 11th vintage at Clank and And what? in those days, I was probably one of the youngest winemakers working at a, at a top property in, in South Africa. I, mean, I think I was 24 or 25 years old when I took over as head winemaker. So it's been a great challenge and a great, Great path since then. Um, well, that's amazing. Been, yeah, I've, I've worked, worked all, of the, all over the world as well. I mean, I've worked in Tokai, I've worked in France and Sancerre, a couple of vintages, I've worked in Napa. Um, so it's been a great journey. But, you know, I absolutely love this place. It's a, it's a great spot. Talking about the place, can you tell, I mean, I think our listeners would be interested to, can you share a little bit of the history of Clan Constantia and, you know? Um, yeah, sure. So, um, we can usually do the short version or the very long version. Um, very few people realize that, you know, the Constantia Valley has been around since 1685, you know, so we're one of the oldest New World wine producing regions. And um, 
we as South Africans should be very proud of that. Uh, if you mm -hmm. think of Australia, you think of Napa Valley, you think of all other new world wine producing regions, they've got a great reputation, but they don't have the history that, that us as South African producers have. So, you know, Clank and Sancho form part of that original farm that was granted to Simon von Estel. You know, it's, it's a long story. It's, it's um, you know, we can talk about the old days. We can talk about production, the old sweet wine of Constantia that became super famous. But our motto at Clank and Sancho is literally, um, we don't care about the history. It's more important to what, what the future is and how we can strive to, for kind of perfection going into the future uh, and ensure that we're here for the next 300 years. Um, so, you know, more recent days, you know, it, it was revived by the Euster family in 1980. Um, they replanted all the vineyards, uh, they recreated the Van de Constance, which we're, we're famous for, and they also planted the Sauvignon Blanc, and then eventually started to experiment with other varieties. So, we're now doing the Method Cup Classique and Chardonnays and Riesling and, and all the rest. So, we've got a, a great portfolio, and then as I mentioned, you know, current day at at the moment, the, the farm is under new ownership since 2011, um, owned by two Bordeaux legends, uh, Bruno Prats and Hubert de Bois. Um, Hubert owns uh, Chateau Andalus. Uh, Bruno used to own Costa Essenal. And then, yeah, we've got two other big investors, um, Hubert, uh, sorry, Stenia Bacalo, who is a Czech billionaire, and Charles Harmon, who's from the UK. So yeah, that's that's kind of where we are today at Clan Constantia. Everyone kind of knows where Constantia is. Um, I don't think I need to say too much else about it. No, I think I think you're, you're right. People people know that um, area quite well. And um, when uh, uh, when did you guys actually start um, uh, making MCC? Talking about that. So they actually made the very first vintage was for the Millennium, um, and that was. Uh, fun experiment and they only made it in magnums um, and you know we still have a couple of those bottles lying around yeah I've opened one recently and it's a beautiful one so that was the year 2000 and then we started commercially in 2005 um, traditionally it was a, a Chardonnay Pinot uh, but in more recent days, days we've we've changed over to 100% Chardonnay because the Pinot just didn't work here at, at Tank and Stancher. Okay. Wow. So, um, your um, uh, where are most of your um, uh, uh, MCC sold? Um, so MCC for us is, you know, it's a it's a hobby. I want to say um, it's one of those projects that you know we have a lot of fun doing it. We don't make a hell of a lot of the MCC. So the majority of the MCC that we actually sell is sold through the tasting room. Um, we sell you know, a little bit in the trade in South Africa. Um, we do quite a lot in, in the UK. Um, you know, we've got markets all over the world that take bits and bobs. Um, mm -hmm. So anywhere and everywhere, basically. Just a little bit about your um, winemaking philosophy. So we, Clank & Sancho is known for the, the Vinda Constance, our sweet wine. Uh, Vinda Constance is a recreation of the great sweet wine of Constantia that was serve to anyone and everyone in the old days. Um, we're striving to make one of the best sweet wines in the world um, and a unique style sweet wine in that it's made from Muscat de Frontignan and raisins, not botrytis. So that's what we're known for. Uh, we're also, we're fortunate to be in the perfect kind of area um, for making cool climate varietals. So we focus um, mostly on Sauvignon Blanc. We do about 10 different Sauvignon Blancs at Clank and Stancha. Um, we've got all sorts of different pockets and, and sorts of terroir. So that's the main focus in terms of a, a normal um, still wine. Um, and then other cool climate varietals, you know, we do the Riesling. Bubbles, we absolutely love because you can have it at every occasion. And when I bring people to the farm, you know, we can take them up to the top, to the dam or to the viewing points and all the rest. You can crack open up a bottle of bubbles and they absolutely love it. Um, so we make, we make too many wines. Um, <laughs> But yeah, those are our focuses. Okay, awesome. So September the 1st is um, Cape Classic Day um, and uh, also Spring Day. So do you guys have any special celebrations planned? Look, I, I have a massive one at the moment in that uh, I've got a newborn in the house. Um, 
my my son is about six days old now so first of september will definitely be celebrating his life uh, Amazing. with a bottle of clank and stantra mcc remember um, the I, flowers right remember the flowers exactly <laughs> actually i took a I uh, snuck a bottle into the, the hospital um, for the night that he was born and uh, wow. we were drinking Frankenstantra MCC in the hospital that night, which was pretty cool. Um, we did the same with my daughter's birth, but it was a bottle of Bollinger, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so we decided we have to keep it local and lacquer. There you go. Well, you know, congratulations. I mean, uh, six days is, is yeah, I, I remember those days. This is, this is fantastic. Just uh, something different, you know, uh, more serious. The coronavirus um, has forced all of us to rethink our business models. Um, do you have any changes or new ideas in mind at uh, Plain Constantia? Because there's always a lot that we, we can change and do. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, we're doing a lot more of these, these Zoom tastings. Um, it's actually, it's great. It means that you know, you don't have to fly all over the world and take wine with you and meet up with people and taste the, and taste wines. Um, it's now become acceptable to to taste and share our wines with people over a tasting like this, which is which has helped a lot in, in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, so it means that we can spread our scape with with wine tastings. So that's a great benefit. The other thing that is that has happened. I mean, obviously we've opened up for business again, and we're getting a lot more people through the door. But the other great thing that has happened is in the last, how many months has it been? I can't even remember. Five um, months. Five months. Yeah. Um, we've, we've had no distractions as winemakers and farm managers and viticulturists and all the mm. rest. We haven't had people coming to the farm. We haven't had to travel overseas. We haven't had to you know, get out to the market purely because we haven't been able to. And uh, 2020 is going to be an incredible year because the people who are actually in charge of making the wine have been there physically making the wine. You know, far too often in the wine industry, it's actually the assistant winemaker that makes the wine and the, the winemaker is traveling the world and, and spreading the news. So this vintage is, is literally been hard work from, from everyone. And, and I guess we'll see that coming through. That's quite interesting. So, um, Matthew, I mean, you've, like you said, you've worked all over the world, um, although you've, you've had a long stint as a um, winemaker at Plain Constantia. What is the most important thing you've learned so far from your wine journey? Um, I actually learned this from a, an incredible winemaker that I worked with in, in Sancerre. His name is Jean-Luc Sorti. Uh, he was the head winemaker at Pascal Jolivet. Um, probably the most chilled out guy in the world. And... Uh, he kind of taught me, you know, life's too short. You know, far, far too often in the wine industry as a winemaker, we overcomplicate things. We worry about things that we can't control. Um, his philosophy is pretty much like the French word, you know, that's c'est la vie. You know, everything will be okay, provided that you have good grapes. So since my time spent with him, I've been a lot more relaxed in the way that we do things. Um, and provided you tick all the boxes, you don't have to overcomplicate things and force a wine style, the wine literally makes itself. And you'll see it in the, in the wines coming out, they're, they're completely different and they they actually taste like a sense of place. And we as South Africans or we as South African winemakers need to do more of this because we need to highlight where our, our wines are coming from as opposed to, to making a style that tastes like everyone else. You know, anyone can make the Sauvignon Blanc, but can you make a Sauvignon Blanc that tastes like the terroir that it actually comes from? And that's what we should be striving for, you know? That sounds awesome. <laughs> Can you um, give us your very own wine quote or MC, uh, MCC quote? MCC quote. Well, the best wine quotes is, I've got two, but the one's going to piss people off. Um, uh, the one that everyone knows is, life's too short to drink bad wine. Yeah. Um, the other one is, why is it that when, when you... When you have one fault in your wine, they consider it faulty. But when you have numerous faults in your wine, they consider it natural. <laughs> That's a very good one, actually. That not that true of life in general? Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matthew, um, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And I'm sure our listeners appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, like you say, you're busy. Um, and uh, things are obviously 
starting to get back to normal slowly, but um, it creates more work when, when people start arriving on the farm. So good luck with that. And um, yes, thank you for spending time with us and, and chatting with us and telling us more about um, uh, playing on Sancho. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It's been great to share it. Thank you for supporting our show. If you would like to get more exposure for your business, please have a look at our sponsorship options. Thanks again for supporting About the Winelands. Please follow us on YouTube and on our social media channels. All details and links are in the description. Thank <music> you.